Remember Joel from the Home Recording Network? We have gotten to become really good friends and I sent him over an entire session to mix and master. And today he is guest posting on my channel and showing you guys how he mixed MIDI drums that I sent him. Him and I do things completely differently. I always mess around with virtual instruments and MIDI drums and he always records drums live. So he's going to show you how to make MIDI drums sound professional and realistic today. But make sure you stick around to the end of the video because I do the same thing on his channel with stems that he sent me. So without further ado, here Here's Joel. I have been recording and mixing for 15 years and for the longest time there was nothing I hated more than programming and mixing MIDI drums. Why? Because they just don't sound like a live drum kit and I'm sure the last thing you want is to release your song only to have the listener hear that you have a machine playing your drums. Well, over the years, I've been in almost every situation imaginable and that includes working with horribly fake sounding MIDI drums. So today I wanna to show you a few things that my mentor showed me when it comes to working with program drums so that your listener doesn't flip to the next song when they hear your digital drum track that sticks out like a sore thumb. Now, I'm sure this video is gonna help out a lot of you, but it's just the tip of the iceberg. If you really wanna take a deep dive with me, make sure you sign up for my free online mix training and you also receive a copy of my home studio mix guide just for registering in the description. This training is about an hour long and is designed for home studio engineers just like you. And it teaches some tips and techniques that are gonna improve your mixes right away. All right, now let's hop into the mix that Andrew sent and we'll start looking at some drums. All right, now first I wanna give a big thanks to Andrew for letting me guest post on his channel and sending me these tracks. The dude posts such great content and provides tremendous value. So if you're not already subscribed to him, go ahead and do so. All right, let's take a quick listen to the track here. Remember, pay attention to the MIDI drums. So those drums sound like some punk rock drums and they sound pretty realistic because they're not sticking out too much. And that is part of it. By the way, Andrew, if you could link the band in the description of the video, that'd be great because I don't know who this band is and I really loved this song and enjoyed mixing it. But my first piece of advice about MIDI drums doesn't have anything to do with the mix. It's about how these things were recorded or programmed. The best way to get a realistic sounding MIDI drum kit is to not program them at all. In fact, it's to do exactly what Andrew did when this song was tracked. When Andrew tracks artists, he actually has the drummer play the part on an electric kit and then routes that through a MIDI program such as Superior Drummer or Get Good Drums. And that is really the easiest way to get realistic sounding MIDI drums. If you're programming them, it's gonna be a lot more difficult. But if you are in that situation, shoot me an email because I have a solution for you. Now to the mix. Now my second tip has to do with tracks and workflow. So when I'm working with MIDI drums, I don't wanna work with MIDI files, right? I wanna work with actual tracks. So if we start expanding some of these, we can see their actual WAV files. I don't wanna be working with a MIDI track when I'm mixing. So all the close mics and everything, they're all bounced to their own track so that when I'm mixing, I can just add my plugins and, and feel like I'm mixing live drums. And it's really the same with anything virtual, any virtual instrument, any amp sims. I never leave the amp sim plugin on the track. I always like to just commit the tones and then start my mix after the fact. Now, my third tip is to keep it simple. So if we look at the drum mix, so my drums are everything from there to here. If we look at these tracks and buses, there's barely any plugins on them. MIDI drums already sound pretty good and there's no reason to over process them. When we start over processing them, they start to stick out a little too much and 
that makes people realize that, hey, he's got fake drums in his song. And I'll get a little bit more into that as we move along, but all the time I see people doing things like brightening up their snare way too much or their cymbals, which makes these things stick out so that the listener can hear these fake drums. All right, so my fourth piece of advice is to start with your room mics. The room mics need to be the bass sound of your drum kit. So if we listen to some of these individual elements, let's try the kick. It's a kick sample, right? It's pretty damn perfect, right? Which isn't realistic. Let's throw in the overheads and the snare. It's just too damn perfect. But if we listen to the room mic MIDI tracks, we can hear that these are the most realistic parts of the kit. And that room sound is going to help your close mics, your close MIDI mics fit in and sound a little bit more realistic. So when I am working with MIDI drums, I start with mixing and balancing the room mics first and then blend in the close mics so that the room mics are actually the overall picture of the kit. Now that sounds a hell of a lot more realistic than this. So the room reverb and those room tracks are really your friend when you're working with MIDI drums. Now let's move on to my fifth tip, which has to do with, again, the drums not sticking out and leaving them pretty natural. So if we look at all the close mics, we don't see any compressors at all. Now I see people do this all the time. They try to treat this like a real drum kit. So let's go to the kick for example. Let's go and throw on a compressor. Let's use the distressor and let's really slam this thing. We'll make it a slow attack, fast release, try to add some more punch to this. Slam it even more. Tons of more punch, right? Now on its own, that sounds awesome, right? Well, in with a mix, that is gonna sound very unnatural and your fake sampled kick drum is again, gonna be sticking out for everybody to hear. These drums have already been compressed. They are samples and there's barely any dynamics to them as it is. We really wanna keep any of the dynamics that these fake drums have so that they sound more realistic. If you want your drums to sound more fake, yes, add a bit of compression. But if you want them to sound more realistic, just stay away from it altogether. I work with mainly live acoustic drums. And when I mix those, I barely use any compression, just maybe a touch while recording. So if I'm not using a ton of compression on live drums, you definitely shouldn't be using any on your MIDI drums. Even if we look at the mix bus down here, where I would usually have one or two compressors for overall glue, there is no compressor on this mix bus because I want any dynamics that this mix has left at the end. Now, I do have some compression on the room tracks and it's very exaggerated compression to get some pumping and some energy. So the room tracks are fine, but close mics, things like that for your MIDI drums, nah, you really don't need any compression. Now, my last tip has to do with your cymbals and it is to darken up your cymbals. A lot of people will go to their overheads on their MIDI tracks and do something like this. They'll add an EQ and they'll do like a 12K shelf boost and really brighten them up. Again, this is gonna make your MIDI drums stick out and sound less realistic. If you listen to an actual pro mix, you will hear that the cymbals are never really overly bright. But as an amateur, and I used to do this all the time back in the day, 
is just brighten up the symbols because it was an easy way to get the mix to sound exciting. But if you mix that way and then compare your mixes to other music out there, you're gonna hear that it actually sounds pretty unnatural. So what I like to do, and I do this on actual overheads as well, is just bring down some of the high end. And darkening these up gets them to sound a bit more realistic. What I want you guys to do now is head over to my channel and see what Andrew did with the tracks that I sent him. This was a fun little experiment for us to do because we got to see how each other worked. And remember guys, we're always learning here and it really never stops. You gotta remain teachable. I hope you guys learned something from me today. Happy mixing.